Thank, thank you, Anna. And yes. Such is the case okay. with the interesting discussions. You always go over time, but I'm yeah. really encouraged by the number of participants. We still have them with us. So thank you for your patience, uh, all attendees and participants. Uh, we are on uh, moving on to our last session, which is way forward uh, and wrap up. Uh, in this session, we will have uh, three excellent uh, speakers who have a great international experience, um, uh, who will share their insights uh, on the whole process uh, uh, of CNI and more so on peatland restoration and the, their association or the, how these relates to uh, with international um, uh, country level uh, commitments and so on and so forth. Uh, I, in interest of uh, saving time and my apologies to all esteemed speakers, I'm not going to introduce you individually. You are uh, well-known uh, people and people can find more information about your work and, and your association on our website. But I'll invite uh, first uh, Maria Nutinen from FAO to share her uh, insights uh, and peatlands monitoring in global context. Over to you, Maria. Thanks so much, Rupesh, and thank you for C4 colleagues. Always very inspiring, uh, solid, very interesting sessions that we are having. I, I let me know if you can't if there's any problem with what you're seeing. I prefer uh, presenting in this mode if that's possible. Yeah. So my my name is uh, Maria Nutinen. I am. Um, a lead, thematic lead of uh, FAO's work on peatlands, and this presentation is a compilation of a whole lot of people, uh, in particular Adam Gerrand, who is today here also at the session, uh, Elizabeth Rams, who is uh, working and helping us to work on the Indi work on uh, in Indonesia, and Laura Villegas uh, in charge of monitoring aspects. Um, not everybody could be here today, but uh, this is indeed a group work. So just uh, showing. Um, um, uh, underlining the, the momentum and the advances that we are having at the moment worldwide. So there's, of course, increased recognition of peatlands. This is uh, well demonstrated by the Indonesian commitment on this. And one key aspect that I want to highlight here is the CBD process for the biodiversity indicator. So let's not also forget about the biological diversity of the wetland species that are being, for example, um, uh, reintroduced to the peatlands. Um, then just want to touch open on the technical innovations. As you may know, our unit here is working on remote sensing aspects, but the, this is not the only uh, area where things are advancing very rapidly. So we are hopefully having a lot more tools within a few more years. The same applies to capacity development, as you may see in the whole movement around the around Global Peatlands Initiative, and also the development of capacity, not only in Indonesia, but worldwide, is, is taking the knowledge and expertise also to a different level. And I want to hear, lift up the opportunity the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration brings to us uh, with also resources to develop this capacity. I will touch upon that a little bit more in the presentation. So here, just to highlight that Peatlands is actually one of the key um, Let's, let's say types of restoration that the UN decade where it's focusing on and and the decade can help us also globally establish these kind of baselines looking at the success cases and for sure there's a lot of attention also to Indonesia the different tools and approaches which have been developed by different partners because this is really an effort that is managed it's coordinated by UNEP and FAO However, it's a really group effort with a lot of partners and the units uh, that are contributing it. I, at least, at least, I think it's over 100 members to the to the UN decade at the moment. Um, so, for example, the the decade is supporting currently in defining uh, the global indicators that will be monitored throughout the UN decade. So the, the, the 2021 up to 2030, and then reported to the different countries who have requested this decade to be happening. And just let me highlight also here the science-based target for the peatland restoration. So Indonesia has already one, but should there be also a global one? How much, by when should it happen? So please have a look at that and how Indonesian efforts could contribute there, bringing, bringing the decade to a next level. On this slide, 
uh, there's a too much text, but let me just highlight that we really want to emphasize what is in also quite clear in this uh, session that we need to build on science and solid information but also the practitioners and field experience and bringing them together to support policy planning and decision making the idea is to also to do comprehensive monitoring and uh, reporting systems these are quite expensive to build so synergies and bringing things together is, is really important i also um, uh, really much welcome this approach of building different communities of practice. And I invite also Indonesian stakeholders to collaborate not only within Indonesia, but also with the international partners, as a lot of the approaches that are being developed are actually applicable with different types of peatlands in different climate areas. And just uh, as one first the key resource that I wanted to highlight, here's a, a publication that also many of you actually contributed to the to this on uh, published in, uh, two years ago on peatland mapping and monitoring. So a lot of the key overview of what needs to be looked at and kind of tools also is, is also listed listed there in a quite short format. Then so I wanted to just highlight a few uh, resources. These are from different members to the Global Peatlands Initiative, where we are already 46 members. I think they believe this field measurement chamber measurement is from C4. Actually, here is a PHGHG tool developed for Indonesian peatland restoration and in general management also to account for and estimate greenhouse gas emissions. The IPCC guidelines, which is the the solid um, confirmed guidance for uh, also greenhouse gas and climate climate estimates uh, and re for the reporting of those estimates. Here we see um, a tool, automatized tool, which is also developed for in Indonesian context. Very important uh, that this is advancing rapidly and some manual uh, deep wells for water table uh, depth measurements, which were also mentioned uh, with the um, uh, biophysical uh, monitoring. And then, of course, last but not least, just wanted to highlight the CPAL platform, which is uh, developed by FAO and has, for example, high, um, high uh, resolution Im imagery available for national actors for monitoring peatlands, both fires and the soil, um, soil moisture, for example. Of course, there are many other tools and uh, platforms. So this is just to bring, uh, bring to your attention the CPAL tool or uh, platform. Then what I thought also, I think this might, might have come up before, but this road to restoration tool undergo went a whole very long consultation process, which was managed by FAO and World Resources Institute. And there, there is this kind of wheel of restoration where different indicators were listed. And I was thinking during today's uh, discussion that it might could be a useful tool, especially when regarding the biodiversity aspects, socioeconomics, maybe I, um, things related to cultural uh, monitoring and indicators. So just wanted to bring that to your opinion, uh, to, to your attention. I can share the, um, the link also in the references of these presentations afterwards. Um, almost done here, but one platform that I also wanted to bring to your attention is under development, but already has a major massive data sets many, uh, that, that countries are reporting to FAO and different partners are contributing. So this is the official platform for monitoring restoration advances during the the UN decade on ecosystem restoration. I also just played around a little bit and inserted here um, uh, something related to soil uh, carbon, for example. Um, and I think that has also other data layers, uh, this one. So you can also insert your data on different aspects, biophysical, socioeconomic, uh, and other, other, for example, on practices or tools. And, um, and then, uh, develop uh, your own um, kind of platform for reporting your the own project level data, for example. I think this can this will be in the future very interesting opportunity without having the need to invest a lot on the your on the own uh, platform development. Even of course, we have also contributed to the PRIMS platform development. I find it uh, extremely useful. Some main areas for future work that I want to highlight also from our coordination with different uh, between different uh, technical partners working on peatland monitoring in different global contexts. Something that is advancing 
rapidly is agriculture monitoring, for example, how the polyculture, how sustainable management practices are advancing. Now, this is, of course, at the heart of Indonesia's efforts as well. The same for early warning, early action uh, systems that really you have to have the warning signs, for example, of for fires, and then have the chain of command or chain of action. What happens at different levels, at the local level, regional, national level, if there is, for example, a fire occurrence. So all the governance system, there is a clear mandate as well. And finally, I just want to highlight this, a lot of data is being collected um, on the greenhouse gas assets, greenhouse gas um, emissions, <laughs> sorry, uh, there is the possibility to update the IPCC wetland guidelines, which is the best of currently available guidance for greenhouse gas accounting on peatlands. And I wanted to also highlight here one other tool, which is the IPCC Atlas. Uh, which is uh, helpful to looking at the current, uh, the, the, the recent trends, past trends, and the projections in the future. So we see, for example, for the region of Southeast Asia, it shows there's a high confidence of increased uh, increased heat, of course, a bit same as uh, today here in Rome. Um, uh, but the, this will globally, of course, increase. But it, what it means to peatlands, that's also something that we need to take into account. So the urgency of revetting properly at the landscape level, um, engaging with the so, uh, social, social and economic tissue, uh, the indigenous peoples, different uh, groups of people into the process becomes even more important so that we avoid the issues that we have seen in the past. Some very brief takeaway messages from me. Um, so what I was really happy to see, there seems to be very broadly shared understanding of the status of restoration and what's actually needed. That was very, very happy, ha happy discovery also that uh, there's such a kind of quite, quite good uh, agreement on that. Um, the social economic um, indicators and how we actually are collecting that data is a much, even much more challenging effort than the biophysical one, which is already quite a, quite a topic for peatlands. I think we all partners need to put more emphasis on this. From FAO's side, we, what we really want to support countries is developing these holistic, robust, coordinated ecosystem monitoring systems that actually lead to more demonstrated better climate action and also help countries, therefore, to access resources and upscale the activities that are already ongoing. And some key aspects for tool development, that of course, point number four, um, just to rem not to forget, we would need to combine the remote sense that because of the sheer scale of the task of monitoring peatlands with field measurements and monitor throughout the process cycle. Uh, that's often done, for example, by, by quarter or by once in uh, dry or once in uh, wet season, for example, but it has to be really regular and probably also last several years after the end of the interventions. Let me close here. I'm really happy to answer questions if there's time. I see a lot of chat, uh, comments in the chat and I can also write there my responses. We will share these slides with you uh, with the references as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maria. And thank you for covering all the vast information which kind of ties together or linked to peatland restoration and also sharing with everyone the sort of global perspective and how different uh, groups, different uh, uh, organizations are working towards the common goal, what are the synergies and how these collaboration and partnerships and as you say communities of practice can come together to achieve this goal. Thank you very much. Um, we move to our next uh, presentation. This would be by uh, Professor Mark Reed. He could not be, uh, be uh, present for personally, so he recorded a small video for us which is going to be his presentation. It is about eight minutes long. And we have a uh, colleague, uh, Johan Schaaf from UNEP uh, with us today to answer any question or any follow-ups uh, related to that presentation. So may I ask uh, C4 events team to present? Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. Hello and thank you for the opportunity to present today. I'm here for the Global Peatlands Initiative on behalf of Scotland's Rural College, one of many members of the initiative. Congratulations on the publication of your manual and for this important work. 
uh, we need to transparently understand uh, simple, practical and yet accurate criteria and indicators if we are going to monitor our world's peatlands and understand how they are evolving, how they are changing, especially in relation to restoration. Uh, and so I'm going to summarise some of the work that the Global Peatlands Initiative have been doing, and I will conclude with some work that I've been leading uh, for the initiative uh, on exactly this topic. So the initiative itself is broad, it's big, it's growing. Uh, we have now got 48 international partners uh, working across four uh, tropical peatland countries in depth, uh, but uh, there, there are no geographical boundaries to this uh, initiative. Uh, and this diversity is uh, a real asset of the group. Uh, together with our members, uh, we are making progress on implementing the resolution for peatlands that was adopted in 2019 during the fourth United Nations Environment Assembly uh, on the, uh, the conservation and sustainable management of uh, peatlands. Uh, and uh, a part of this is to do the world's first global assessment of uh, peatlands. This uh, global peatland assessment is going to provide uh, an overview of peatlands, trying to understand their extent, uh, their condition, uh, some of the threats and some of the things that we can do to conserve, to restore and sustainably manage those peatlands for future generations. We've got over 150 authors from around the world contributing to the 10 chapters. Uh, we have first order drafts now of every chapter, uh, the plan being that we launch at the next Conference of the Parties in Egypt later this year. One of the things that we've been doing as a research, uh, as, as GPI in fact, is to facilitate a research working group. So this is chaired by Diana Kapansky and I. We've got almost 200 researchers who are engaging in different ways with the research group, uh, trying to share knowledge, uh, opportunities, and combined forces, whether that's uh, data projects uh, or just new ideas uh, so that we can operate at that global level uh, and working across both geographical and disciplinary boundaries. Uh, you may have uh, come across some of this. Uh, I know a lot of you will have attended many of the uh, sessions, whether in person or online. Uh, we facilitated the first ever Global Peatlands Pavilion at uh, COP26 in Glasgow. Uh, you can see uh, some of the stuff on the screen here that we've done and the virtual pavilion that you can see here is still accessible and still growing. Uh, some huge impacts that have come from this in terms of agreements, collaborations, new initiatives, uh, and we're following up uh, both to find out the long-term impact and support that uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, but loads of things happening uh, across the world that we are feeding into, across the UN system, uh, in uh, each of the four focal countries that we're working in as an initiative and much more broadly. Uh, and one of the contributions that we're trying to make on this global level is to try and understand how we might better be able to coordinate what we do in this research space. We're all collecting lots of different types of peatland data, uh, but we're not doing this in a coordinated way. And that's a problem for policy. And so on the screen here, you can see some of the work that we've done towards this. And I'm now going to visit a local peat bog to tell you a bit more about this work and encourage you to have a look at our forthcoming paper. Now, I think we are all increasingly aware of the importance of peatlands in the global carbon cycle and why it is so essential to protect, conserve, uh, to sustainably manage and, where necessary, restore these habitats so that we can keep the carbon locked in our peatlands in the soil where it belongs. And of course, we want to base our policies and practices on evidence wherever we possibly can. But that is not about just taking the latest study that suggests we do one thing. Uh, instead, responsible policymaking is about reviewing that body of evidence, including studies that say one thing versus another, depending on the timescale over which they were conducted, uh, the context, the attitudes, the, the peatland type, etc. 
and to get that sense of actually what the body of work says, we need evidence synthesis. But that's a problem. Uh, almost everyone who tries to do an evidence synthesis in this area discovers that there are multiple studies out there, but they've all measured different things. And even where they have measured the same thing, they've measured it in different ways. And even if they measure the same thing in the same way, they may well have reported it in a very different way. Uh, and they may even have reported it in the same way, but they haven't then reported all the contextual data in terms of, well, what was the peak depth? Uh, where was it? What altitude was it at? Uh, what was the gradient it was on? Uh, the, the climate, all of that stuff, which you actually need to be able to interpret the findings of those studies and integrate it. Uh, and so uh, my colleagues and I set out uh, in collaboration with the International Union for the Conservation of Nature's UK Peatland Programme for the UK and then for Tropical Peatlands in collaboration with UNEP's Global Peatlands Initiative to try and reach agreement amongst the scientific policy practitioner community but primarily uh, experts who are out there collecting this data uh, and get a consensus in what are the key things we should, wherever possible, be measuring. So to do this, we organised a consensus process where we brought together experts from the UK and from the tropics to try and agree on what are the core, the most important variables that wherever possible we should be trying to measure, whether that's a research project or a monitoring programme, perhaps post-restoration. Uh, and we did that in four different categories. So we've got uh, climatic variables, uh, carbon accumulation rates, uh, greenhouse gas fluxes and the like, uh, hydrological variables, biodiversity variables, fire variables, especially uh, in the tropics. Uh, and the idea is now that uh, if we've got these core sets of variables uh, to choose from, uh, then uh, if I'm a researcher, if I'm running a monitoring programme of all the things I could measure, uh, here's some guidance now uh, on the key things that ideally we need to know about to inform policy and practice. And if I choose from these lists, uh, then I increase the likelihood that I'm measuring the same things as other people, which then means that we are much more likely to be able uh, to synthesise, integrate findings from across different studies and provide much better synthetic evidence to policy and practice. There is, of course, more work to be done. Uh, we might understand what the core variables are that we're all looking for, but we need to decide what methods are most appropriate to collect data for each of these variables. And we need to think about how we're going to report that data as well, using tools like Peat Data Hub. Uh, ultimately, this paper is a first step, but we hope an important first step towards standardising how we collect and can synthesise peatland data around the world so that we can provide better evidence to policy and practice to protect these incredible habitats. We thank Mike for recording this presentation. And I think one of the key messages is very clear, standardising the methods or standardising what we measure and how we measure so that it becomes a solid case or it be becomes the evidence that can help in, uh, in or that can influence the policy in the right direction. Um, I do not see any specific question um, directed to this presentation, uh, but people are, uh, participants are welcome to respond there or, or give their feedback or ask question in the chat box. Um, I would, move to our last and final speaker, uh, Haruni, Dr. Haruni Krishnavati. She is also coordinator of ITPC, International Tropical Peatland Center. Um, over to you, Dr. Haruni. Yes, uh, thank you, Rupesh. Uh, good afternoon and good morning, colleagues. Uh, I'm the last one, but of course, uh, it is my pleasure to be uh, part of this workshop and appreciate for C4 and partners for hosting this workshop and all speakers uh, who have shared their presentation. Uh, I will not be giving any presentations, uh, but uh, based on what we have, we have been discussing today, I acknowledge 
the efforts uh, in the development of criteria and indicators for peatland restoration and also field testing uh, the criteria and indicators in several uh, peatland restoration uh, area in Indonesia. And of course, uh, I should also acknowledge the government of Indonesia commitments on peatland restoration in ongoing action, including the development of the system to monitor peatland restoration, inventory and mapping is has also been supported by some uh, international partners. And we see that a lot of uh, knowledge, uh, information on tropical peatland restorations has been uh, available and some action has been uh, conducted on the field to monitor the impact of uh, restoration on vegetation and water balance, as well as uh, social and economic impacts. Ongoing action in the fields uh, to restore and sustainable mineral peatlands also exist, which could be uh, scaled up as the best practice and uh, develop standardized protocol for peatland uh, restoration and uh, monitoring and uh, could contribute to the development of science-based uh, policy or uh, evidence-based policy on peatland restoration and sustainable management. As a variety of uh, knowledge products has been produced uh, by uh, various stakeholders, and I think the synergy and uh, cooperation is needed to gather uh, available information and knowledge and to develop further capacity to improve uh, science-based action for tropical uh, peatland countries and uh, provide right recommendation for uh, policy decision. I think with regards to uh, knowledge exchange and sharing, ITPC, uh, International Tropical Plant Center Secretariat has been developing a knowledge platform which can connect knowledge and uh, research to people. And through this platform, we can use as a tool uh, two places for information on peatland ecosystem, including those on uh, peatland uh, inventory, uh, restoration mapping, monitoring, and uh, reporting. And this can be used as a tool uh, for knowledge exchange, uh, for example, on the strength and weakness and the sharing, the capacity building. And also we can use this to interconnect uh, expert, peatland expert individuals to uh, peatland expert directory and and so can be used as a tool to synthesize uh, knowledge on peatland restoration. Uh, knowledge platform can also be used to facilitate uh, unique peer-to-peer -peer exchange of best uh, practice in order to scale up and improve action for peatland restoration. And uh, finally, I would like to also uh, uh, emphasize that uh, I think we need to uh, for coordinate interdisciplinary and science-based uh, national, regional, and local response to strengthening the criteria and uh, indicator to support global achievement on peatland ecosystem restoration with particular reference for tropical uh, peatlands. I think uh, this all uh, my comment that I could share in this session due to the time uh, limits. Thank you. Uh, to request. Thank you for having me. And uh, I'm sorry, uh, the time was really short. And uh, being the last one, uh, you you felt a little pinch. But your uh, inputs and your suggestions and your insights are very well taken. And it's it's valuable uh, that we work together and we share and we use all the different tools we have at our disposal, whether it's uh, websites, whether it's different platforms where we can share this this information which is coming from different sources and then it can be then taken upon to influence the policies or decision making where it has the most impact. So it is again my pleasure to thank everyone for participating in the event and, and contributing. Uh, a formal closing will be done by our MC Iska, but I just want to recap and take one more minute of everyone's attention uh, uh, that this workshop is, is, is was very very important because uh, if you look at the running theme we started on with just the importance of of uh, peatland restoration and it is 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 well 
acknowledged, well realized that peatlands are important and the restoring peatlands is, is need of the hour. Uh, as Pargusti was saying, it cannot be done overnight. It will take a consistent and concerted effort of a lot of people, a lot of actors, a lot of players, whether it's at the local scale, whether it's a national scale, whether it's a, it's a even global scale, but all of these different entities, different stakeholders have to come together. And as Paheri was mentioning, this the scale matters, not only for regulating, but also who governs who is making those uh, rules, whether we are taking into consideration the local realities, whether the existing practices and history of a site is taking into consideration. So if we have to achieve a, a real impact, a successful restoration, all these things, all these different streams of information, data, uh, uh, evidence have to come together. There is an element of standardization if we want to report it to, because doing something or achieving successes is not really a full success if it is it cannot be replicated if we cannot influence people if we cannot convince others that this is the way and it is a successful way and this is how you can solve your problem so this is all coming uh, this is all a step towards coming together identifying what tools, what resources we have, whether it's financial resources, whether it's technical resources, whether it's the capacity, and identifying those gaps and then try to address them. It will only happen with uh, with, with the concerted efforts, with, with the progress that we make together as a group, as team. We may be representing different organizations, different uh, streams of maybe government or international organization or practitioners or maybe community members. But since we all are committed to the same goal, same objective, I think we, we can move forward. And I, I hope like all other existing tools and, 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 and uh, things in place, criteria and indicators could certainly serve that, that tool which can help us to progress towards that that goal towards that objective. So I thank you everyone for these interesting discussions. I believe this will continue. This is not the end. And we look forward to share the, the manual that we talked and discussed in detail after incorporating all your feedbacks, relevant suggestions, and important insights. With that, I hand it over to our MC Iska to do the final closing. And thanks all for your patience and staying long. Over to you, Iska. Thank you, Rupes, Padanil, and Mbak Anna for moderating the session and all of resource person for your presentation. We would like to announce that there will be a post-event survey for evaluation of this workshop. We will share evaluation link in the chat box and also via email. We request all attendees to complete this survey and provide your feedback. Thank you. Now, as we conclude this exciting event, we would like to thank all resource persons, speakers and panel members, moderators and engaged participants for your enthusiasm and active participation during the, this workshop. Today's presentation will be available on the event page of C4 website in the next few days. We sincerely apologize for any mistakes during the event. Thank you very much for all your support. Stay healthy and hope to see you in another time. Thank you. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.